there's no meaning to the concept of devotional service. Uh, because how are we going to know what Krishna wants? Uh, there's a, a million different things in this, described in the scriptures that we could do to serve Krishna. But what's the one thing that he wants us to do? What is that, what is that role? What is that relationship that he has to reveal? No book can do that. It is the opinion of expert devotees that mental speculation and the artificial austerities of yoga practice may be favorable for becoming liberated from material contamination, but they will also make one's heart harder and harder. They will not help at all in the progress of devotional service. These processes are therefore not favorable for entering into the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Actually, Krishna consciousness, devotional service itself, is the only way of advancing in devotional life. Devotional service is absolute. It is both the cause and the effect. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the cause and effect of all that be. And to approach Him, the Absolute, the process of devotional service, which is also absolute, has to be adopted. Wrap your brain around that. <laughs> so basically it's the impersonalists who preach this. Well, you have to become very knowledgeable. You have to study all these things. And then once you know, ah, then you can realize. No, because we see in practice what happens. When a person, for example, Srila Prabhupada instructed his devotees not to go to mundane universities. But of course, uh, several of them did anyway. And guess what happened? They became the chief players in the revolution against Srila Prabhupada within ISKCON. Uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj and Vinayananda Goswami, they, be, they went to college against Srila Prabhupada's orders. They went to university. And just today I read the, the unpublished uh, doctoral thesis of Tamal Krishna Maharaj. And it is such a work of mental speculation that you would not believe. I mean, it's so out there. It's like, you know, it's like, where did he get this from? Basically, he's saying that Srila Prabhupada is not absolute and that his theology should be questioned and, and on, on and on and on like this. So this, this is subversive to devotional service. Huh? But it, in, in terms of jnana, it's very good. Huh? First class mental speculation. And I'm sure he got rave reviews from the academic uh, world. But that meant that he was an offender at the feet of his spiritual master. Uh -huh. And because of this, Krishna took him out. And Krishna himself killed him. Got him out of the way. Since then, the other one has become very, very quiet. So we should understand that these qualities, which are considered very nice in material estimation, are actually disqualifications for entering into the devotional service of the Lord because they make one's heart very hard. And we have practical experience of this. Okay. Many, many years of practical experience of this. So the Lord is both the cause and the effect. See, this is our philosophy. Achintya bhed abhed tattva. In material logic or material uh, reasoning, the same object cannot be both the cause and the effect. See, but in transcendental logic, there's no problem with that. The Lord can be both the cause and the effect, and still he is one. Huh? So this is transcendental logic. In the transcendental world, one plus one equals one. The one minus one equals one. Om purnamadaha purnamidam. The Lord is always complete and perfect. He has everything within himself. 
uh, cause and effect, beginning and ending. Uh, energy and the source of energy. Time and eternity. Uh, he has everything within himself. So, devotional service to him is also of the same quality. Devotional service is both the cause and the effect of devotional service. Hmm? So, the, the cause of our getting involved in devotional service is someone else's devotional service. When we meet a, a pure devotee or a guru, we uh, associate with that person, and due to their devotional service, we also become connected in devotional service. And then due to our devotional service, we increase our devotional service. You see? So devotional service is the only thing that can cause devotional service, and devotional service is the only thing that can be the effect of devotional service, because they're both transcendental. Where does mundane knowledge and mental speculation and all this stuff come into it. Well, they're only necessary in the preliminary purification stage to get rid of our mundane inebriates, our mundane contaminations. As soon as we pass beyond that stage to the actual uh, stage of chanting the pure holy name, then we have no more need for these things because the holy name himself reveals Krishna. Krishna is himself the holy name. And the Holy Name has all the potencies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead invested. So the Holy Name is both the cause and the effect. Uh, just chant the Holy Name. All this will become obvious. <laughs> this is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita by the Lord himself. One can understand me only through devotional service. In the beginning... His teaching of the Gita, oops, in the beginning of his teaching of the Gita, the Lord said to Arjuna, because you are my devotee, I shall teach these secrets to you. Vedic knowledge means ultimately to understand the Supreme Lord. And the process of entering into his kingdom is devotional service. That is accepted by all authentic scriptures. Mental speculators neglect the process of devotional service and by simply trying to defeat others in philosophical research, they fail to develop the ecstasy of devotion. So we see many devotees. Oh, first of all, Krishna says to Arjuna, I will teach these secrets to you because you're my devotee. Not because you're a great scholar, not because you're a great fighter, not because you're this or that, uh, but because you're a devotee. See, Krishna will only reveal his secrets to a devotee. He won't reveal to the non-devotee scholars and the uh, impersonalist speculators. So that's because through devotional service, one can actually understand Krishna. And if you understand Krishna, then uh, you become intimately associated with him. And Krishna doesn't want the association of the speculators. He doesn't want the association of the impersonalists. They're offensive. Well, why should he want them? So, uh, if you have this knowledge, you can enter into the kingdom of God. You can enter into the spiritual world. And Krishna doesn't want those rascals in the spiritual world. So that's not the process. Uh, the process is devotional service itself. But we see the mental speculators, they're very expert in arguing. Oh, they can argue all day. In fact, they like it. And that's the difference between a speculator and a devotee. The, the speculator is always out trying to get the edge on the other guy, you know, and defeat the, his opponents. But the, uh, the, the devotee doesn't care for this. The devotee just wants to worship Krishna. Uh, so he's always chanting the holy name. He's always doing devotional service. Always engaged, always absorbed, like that, favorably in devotional service. That's the difference. For example, when Srila Rupa Goswami was approached by some uh, scholar, let me debate you, and the winner will, you know, take all of the honor and be uh, known as the greatest Acharya. Rupa Goswami didn't care to debate. He just, he's, 
He wasn't into it. He was too busy. He had all these books to write on the, on the revelations of Lord Chaitanya to him. So he, he didn't want to debate. He said, no, nah, it's all right. Uh, if you want, I'll sign the paper that says you win. That's okay. He didn't care. So similarly, we don't care when, when people like want to debate us on YouTube and stuff like this. I mean, we, we really just have, we don't have time for it. In the 11th canto, 20th chapter, verse 31 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna says, My dear Uddhava, for persons who are seriously engaged in my service, the cultivation of philosophical speculation and artificial renunciation are not very favorable. When a person becomes my devotee, he automatically attains the fruits of the renunciation of material enjoyment, and he gets sufficient knowledge to understand